One of the great mysteries of the world has been the Shroud of Turin, in which the image of a man many believe is Jesus is in effect burned into a piece of cloth. James Barrett has spent the last seven years researching the scientific data that's been gathered on the Shroud and has expanded the research to include ancient spiritual technologies. The result of this melding of science and spiritual wisdom is the discovery of a signature frequency of the human heart that allows for ascension, the frequency of compassion. In medical science, there's a uh, new operation that's done. It's called the uh, still point. The still point? Yeah. What is that? It's, a, it's an operation they do when you have like a blood vessel exploding in your head. Mm -hmm. And they literally bring your body temperature down to 58. They stop your brain waves in your heart and they drain the blood from your body so there's no pressure on right. the vessel. Right. They fix the vessel, they reintroduce everything, you're literally beyond dead, technically. Right. I mean, they drain the blood, your body temperature, no brain waves, no heart waves. And then people reconstitute and come back. And most of them, when they come back, the ones that survive, which is the majority of them. The, mo the majority truly survive. Yes. And there's several good books on the subject. And they're actually down in Arizona is where they perform this most of the time. And literally, these people, when they come back, talk about watching the operation. Okay, the body is totally no electrical activity. Yes. And they come back into the physical body. It speaks loudly about this other aspect of ourself, this non-local witnessing aspect that we're understanding now from consciousness research. Mm-hmm. That, that the ancients might call your soul, the right. Atma. Right. You know? And in this aspect, um, when you align that with your heart and the egoic self, creates a unique attunement. Attunement that you can actually see in the, in the balance between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Mm -hmm. You can see in the immune system. You can see in the DNA. You can see in a whole broad range of physical attributes and characteristics. Mm -hmm. And you feel joy or at peace. If you watch any of the Shrouded Turn programs like on TV, the Discovery Channel, what you'll see there is a sanitized version of what the real true researchers into the subject know. If the people that actually researched the object have come to these conclusions about the object, there's a lot of science that were, they were first off, in 77, I mean, in 1973, a group took a photo of the shroud and they took it and they put it through a NASA device called the VP8 analyzer. And this picture, when it went through the analyzer, generated a 3D image of the body laying under the cloth. Wow. No other painting or picture or object, single picture, does that. This tool was created to take pictures from outer space and generate topography, okay? Right. When that happened, it generated a lot of interest in the scientific community. And in 1978, a group that was called the Shroud of Turn Research Project, about 24 people, went over and did all sorts of uh, experimentation, photos, they took sticky tape. They did a, 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 an enormous amount of research in about a five-day period. All that research that they took has been studied and studied and studied. And they understand how the image was placed on, in terms of the medium. It was light or energy. And it, what, there's a starch on it. And this starch literally embedded in some unique perfect way, the image, in perfect resolution. The camera right now is catch, capturing me in perfect resolution in a certain plane. The Shroud of Turin is in perfect resolution, the front and the back. Mm -hmm. Even though this cloth was laying over this body. There were coins on the eyes, flowers around the head, there's pollen dust, there's rock dust, there's blood, there's forensic evidence. There's a wealth of material. And when you look at the whole body of material, it's pretty consistent that this object came from the first century and that a man 
died a very violent, torturous death inside the cloth. Mm -hmm. The forensic evidence is clear on that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So how did a man, because we can't do it today, how did it, and how come it hasn't been done several times since then, mm -hmm. even if it was done in the 1300s, how come it hasn't been done again and again and again? Mm -hmm. Produce an image on a cloth. And the, the, and the image is in negative, it's not even in positive. It wasn't until like 1898 when a photographer took the first picture of it and when he was developing the picture in his dark room, saw the actual image arise in the negative. It's, it's an incredible, incredible thing. For me personally, after researching it, the shroud is intended for this period of time. For the full story on James' theory of how the shroud was created, go to ConsciousMediaNetwork.com.